Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and I'm back with another new map. This map is called Far East, and it was part of Wargaming's Recon Mission, which was a game mode that was intended to run pretty much for the entirety of the current patch of World of Tanks. I think it's 113. Unfortunately, Recon Missions were taken down because Tier 8 Preferential Matchmaking Tanks didn't have Preferential Matchmaking. And here we are several weeks later and with Update 1.14 probably arriving in about two to three weeks from now. And we still don't have Recon Mission back. Recon Missions is a really cool feature of World of Tanks, I feel, where Wargaming put in multiple new maps, put them inside a new game mode. Players can sign up on the live server to be able to play them. And you get rewards, experience, credits. I think you could even complete missions just like you could in the regular queue. So, Recon Game Mode, a fabulous way for Wargaming to gain feedback on new maps because that's what makes World of Tanks special. Adds to a lot of the variety of the game, i.e. how many different maps there are and how they play differently. So, with that all said and done, let's focus on this new map, which is called Far East. Far East... I'm going to be going over in a little bit more detail after I show you around on it. I thought I would show you a game that led on from my previous rundown of the map that I did several weeks ago. I'm going to be playing in my T100LT on my Plays for Free account. And as you can see, Wargaming have left some pretty prominent bushes in the middle of this map. And these prominent bushes are awesome for light tanks to be able to spot out from. But also, whoa, Wargaming seems to be in love with having us going inside buildings and going inside this kind of sub hangar here that goes right underneath the airfield. An ability to be able to go from the north, I guess, to the south, or shall I say more the central map without having to drive over this big open no man's land. It's a shame when you think about it that there's already a map in the game called Airfield, because if there was one map that was going to be called Airfield, Surely it should have been this one, right? Literally is! Literally is an airfield rather than more of a, a dusty, sandy scrap of a map that is airfield currently in World of Tanks. So these bush lines are just absolutely phenomenal for working inside your T100LT. This is kind of like the, uh, the bush line on Prokhorovka uh, that you can use that really nets you probably some of the biggest games of all time in your scouts. Now, we just had one of those kind of like, ah, moments where a T100LT meets a T100LT, proxy spots, probably kind of like uh, gives the finger to each other while, you, while you're while you kind of driving away in that situation, right? Uh, there's not much you could do. It's just one of those ugly and horrible scenarios of playing a, a light tank in World of Tanks where you both proxy spot each other. But as we can see, I'm getting some massive spotting here at the start of this game. In the first three minutes, we're up to 5,000 spotting and also having managed to take out a vehicle ourselves and do some decent damage. I like the fact that on these new maps, Wargaming are actually giving light tanks an opportunity to have little playgrounds to be able to work with. It's not only light tanks that are going to be able to use these positions, but also medium tanks as well should be fairly proficient. As we can see, the Kampfpanzer is making his way forwards there to try and do exactly the same thing. A T100LT on the enemy team can't be any slouch as they have actually purchased the special ranked camo. But luckily for me, it looks like my team is a little bit better and they've been working with the vision that I have provided. I just love the T100LT for these kind of slippy plays. But one thing that I don't like is getting hit for a Scorpion G for over 600. I thought that tank was meant to have 490 alpha damage. Yeah, sometimes the 25% uh, RNG in World of Tanks can, can swing the other way, right, into the enemy team's favor. So we've managed to basically provide enough view range to get multiple vehicles taken out here in this tier 8 game. And now we're above the Scorpion G. One thing I did feel while I was playing this map is I, I love the fact that there are so many little ridge lines that you can work with that allows you to feel that even a very open map like this, you can still manage to surround and isolate your opponents. It feels like Wargaming are creating these ridge lines that you have to fight your way towards, dig in in that position, and then move towards the next one. Whether that's kind of good gameplay, um... I guess it's better than us just sitting opposite each other on some kind of hill and just waiting for the enemy team to make a move. However, you've got to question how much of that is going to happen when everybody is not a noob on a map like this. In the, the Far East situation, uh, i.e. 
everybody playing this map for pretty much the first time, as this, I believe, was the only day which you could have played this map for, for the recon, um, the ill-fated recon game mode, which I do expect when I say ill-fated, the wargaming are going to bring it back. Just in what form and how quickly they're going to bring it back remains to be seen. I think they should bring it back fairly soon, because I, I think it's a fantastic addition to World of Tanks. And the more information that they can get from players to hopefully allow them to make better decisions to be able to make better maps can only be a good thing. So in this scenario, we've managed to crush our way through the airfield part of the map. Now we're trying to go after the Object 705 Ace tracks, but we can see because they're boosting their hit points, the durability of their track is increased, which makes it very hard for us to be able to track the Tier 10 Soviet Heavy Tank. Lucky for us, we can use our mobility to be able to evade them, and just like that, on our first game ever on this Far East map, we've managed to dominate some vision in the T100 LT and take down a decent round of World of Tanks for our team. All right, now you've seen a game play out on Fire East, I'm going to give you my initial impressions of the map. Firstly, let's get ourselves a bird's eye view so we can take a look at this. This is definitely one of the larger maps I've ever played in World of Tanks. As we can see, nearly the entirety of the map is passable with only the river towards the, the southwest and maybe some of the hill line that juts out here towards the, the southeast, preventing players from being able to play. The map has this kind of new approach that Wargaming want. Create a bit of a no man's brawling dead zone in the center of the map and then try and encourage players to try and take the corner that we can see up towards the northeast or alternatively try and fight through the town and also some of the undulations that we see around here to try and attack through the southwest. This new approach by Wargaming of trying to divide up the map in two to create two distinct attacking routes. Obviously Wargaming want the, the heavier tanks and maybe some of the tank destroyers to fight towards the southwest while they want the medium tanks and the light tanks to try and tussle it out for the northeast of this map. I'd say the main feature of Far East, at least currently, before Wargaming add anything more to this map, and let me clarify once again, there's no guarantee this map's going to come into the game and this is a first iteration to try and get what the player base think about it. The main feature has to be the runway that goes right down the middle. What's crazy about this is that, as you would expect from a runway, it's pretty much completely flat. There are no objects to be able to hide behind and there are no bushes to be able to use and you're gonna the, the runway is about 200 meters wide it's gonna take a long time to be able to get from one side to the other for a heavy tank it's pretty much a death just waiting to happen it really will become a bit of a, a choke point even though i'd say that it's probably more of a kill zone that prevents players from being able to progress through this area i think it's going to be down to your light tanks to try and work the bushes try and sneak their way using the dip in the middle and the bypass underneath the runway to be able to sneak through these bushes and try and provide their team some vision and maybe they can try and light up some of the tank destroyers that are going to be locating clearly in the lovely dips that they have here in the bushes to be able to work. One thing that's interesting about this location at the moment is that Wargaming aren't putting the bushes on the top of the ridge. If they put the bushes on the top of the ridge, tank destroyers will just sit in them, they'll fire and then they'll fall back down behind the ridge. By putting them in this situation, unless you're an incredibly tall tank destroyer, and I don't even think maybe a mouse would be that tall, good luck trying to see out of the bushes and even shoot over the ridge line that's in front of you. From this position, we will be able to see one of the things that really scares me about this map, and that is that currently to be able to fight for the hill, you have very little cover in some situations where you're literally just forced, as through here, to driving out into the open, where tank destroyers down below are going to be able to render you at that kind of distance. If they come forwards into a bush line such as this, they're going to be 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, just shy of 600 meters to be able to shoot tanks as they're making their way up here. And of course, that is within just the 568 meters render distance inside World of Tanks. I did feel that with the vision that I was able to apply from the center, it did make it quite hard for the enemy team to try and get up on top of the hill. But then again, there are enough situations uh, where you have ridge lines to protect yourself and then bush lines to try and spot out of. So you should realize, try and drive between the bushes only when it's safe. Taking the hill, as with all high ground, should be done as a matter of priority. From here, medium tanks or even heavy tanks with good gun depression are going to have a wide line of fire over the whole of the terrain down below. And I think this is going to be one of the more dominant positions to be able to take. Although... Pff, Really, it's going to be a tricky one because unless you have the speed to be able to get up on the hill, then 
you're going to be very vulnerable in doing so. When you're on top of the hill, it's going to be a fight, you know, that kind of classic World of Tanks fight. Lots of dips to be able to work. I'm sure that Soviet medium tanks and other vehicles with good turrets and gun depression are just going to absolutely dominate. One thing that worries me about this position is I think unless you truly overwhelm your opponents, it's going to be hard to be able to make the inevitable push down afterwards. And I do expect that there's just going to be a whole series of tank destroyers sitting in the hangars and the bushes that we see down below. And unless you have light tanks being able to spot them, I can't really imagine that getting down off the hill afterwards is going to be very easy at all. It should also be mentioned, and maybe this would be a little bit more significant before the nerfs happened, this terrain up towards the north doesn't really give you much hard cover, shall we say, from artillery. But you know what? Artillery in such a state right now, don't think that you're going to be worrying about that all too much. The other opportunity, either for medium tanks or light tanks, will be to fight in towards the center of the map. And of course, you can use that bypass that goes under the runway to be able to go from the north to the center of the map. I don't really think many players are going to be going up this hill. And as far as I can see, the only purpose this really serves is if one team is just deciding to camp all up on top of the hill. And you can use this as another way to be able to get hull down against your opponents below them and force them to fight you or to be able to provide vision for your team who might be shooting up at them from down below. Camping the hill is also not going to be a viable option as there are some hard cover scenarios here inside the cap circle, a rather unusual thing for World of Tanks to enable teams to be able to cap out without actually having to take the hill. So this allows the fight towards the south to really determine the control over the cap circles. And as we can see from my base here, there's a big building that you can hide behind. And this is interesting design because this is not usually the case that cap circles have cover in them. And it's very clear to me that Wargaming have made this as a design choice because they realize just how advantageous it is probably going to be if you get the hill and how hard it will be able to take tanks away from a, a bird's eye camping position up there. The river does pose an interesting attacking prospect. It's thin enough, or shall I say shallow enough, to be able to traverse all the way from one base to another. And as we can see at either end, there are opportunities to be able to leave the river and be able to start to attack the enemy base, including their cap circle. This, however, could be quite a tricky prospect. As we can see, there's a whole lovely line of buildings and bushes also protecting cover all the way throughout. Wargaming really want this road to be a safe place for heavy tanks and maybe slower tank destroyers to be able to progress towards the enemy base and these positions will have lovely lines of fire down below anybody who wants to try and fight it out towards this central brawling area of the map for the light tanks or the medium tanks or anyone sneaky or possibly stupid enough to try and use the river to try and flank and to be able to get the enemy base. I do expect that this river is probably going to be a highway only for the fastest of light tanks to be able to try and get towards the enemy's self-propelled guns who are undoubtedly going to try and hang around at the rear of the map in these kind of locations of the bushes and the river. So now let's talk about the fight towards the south of the map. I do expect the heavier medium tanks, the tank destroyers and the heavy tanks to be able to try and brawl around here. It's an interesting one because while it does have a town, the town only exists alongside this road, which means that towards the south of the, the town, so to say, that there are actually lots of ridge lines and open spaces in between. Now, Wargaming have put a lot of dips and undulations here that heavy tanks and medium tanks are going to be able to go hold down in. And really, apart from this area that we see in this kind of space to the left and to the right of the central town, those are the only two real kill zones that there are going to be that a heavy tank or a tank destroyer are going to be able to traverse through. One thing that's immediately concerning for me, however, is that the defensive positions here are really not equal. If we consider this part, this line across here, to be the center of the map, Wargaming have given the team that spawn over towards the west the opportunity to be able to hide down in this dip and also have access to the river, something that the enemy team is not going to be able to do. From here, they're going to be able to defend against this field. 
However, on the other hand, for the team that spawns towards the east of this map, they're going to have lots of opportunities to snake their way along here and then be able to use these bushes to be able to spot and completely counter this position. This means that anyone who's caught down there is pretty much going to get absolutely dominated from tanks that go forwards into this bush, spot anyone down into this location, and there's, there's no escape for the enemy once they've managed to get there. They'll have to fall back from this location, fall back possibly to these bushes or even fall back to the corner of this building. And once they've done so, I expect we're going to see some pretty sketchy play to be able to go along the inside of here. But it does look uh, possibly traversable to then end up in a position to go hold down against the enemy team. That would be a very bold play, however. Although, to be fair, if the enemy team want to try and answer that and push to be able to dig the tanks that came from the east out, then they're going to make themselves vulnerable to any lines of fire of the eastern team's supporting allies. All in all, I do feel that this town is going to be an interesting crossfire. I do think that the, the super heavy tanks and the super heavy tank destroyers are going to want to try and stay in the buildings. Whereas heavier medium tanks or even some of the, the faster heavy tanks are going to probably try to make a breakthrough along the south. And once they've done that, they will be able to get beautiful crossfire on any of the vehicles that do sit in the town. If there's one thing that does concern me about this map, it does feel that each one of these buildings has such a large amount of open terrain that they have to worry about the different angles that they're going to get fired at. I do feel that one team that gains an advantage early is probably going to snowball hard, as on this kind of a map, numbers really do matter way, way, way more than other maps where maybe one really powerful tank can hold back in enemy advance at a specific choke point. So to conclude, Far East, a map that does seem to pose a lot of opportunities for a lot of different tank types. Light tanks are going to try and fight for vision right through the center, or maybe use their speed to be able to dominate the hill. The medium tanks, a lot more opportunities. They could fight for the supremacy in the center to be able to spot. They could inevitably try and make their heavier push towards winning the hill or alternatively they could even make flanking plays to try and support the heavies and the tank destroyers to win through the town. I think winning through the town here is going to be something that is very important to do because of what I highlighted with the cap circle. You have to hold the south to be able to protect the cap and the team that holds the south will force the enemy that tries to take the north to rush in, make themselves vulnerable if they want to try and protect the cap circle. That is, of course, unless they have some kind of artillery position. While, it, at least in my opinion, there are enough positions for tank destroyers to be able to use throughout the map, and they're going to have a jolly good time, at least until the light tanks and the medium tanks start to close the distances. All right, so that was my look at Far East, a possible new map coming to World of Tanks that was tested, albeit shortly, inside the Recon game mode. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video today. If you did, make sure you give, the, give it a thumbs up. But if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what you think about the Far East map. Do you think it looks absolutely awful? Do you think it looks absolutely lovely? What positions do you think look crazy overpowered? And do you think that there are any parts of the map that aren't going to be used at all? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.